Butker trying to line this up. Winchester will snap it. Colquitt will hold it. Twenty twenty tie. High snap. Pull down. Butker's kick is up. It is right down the boulevard. It's good. And the Chiefs take a twenty-three to twenty lead with four seconds left in regulation. And Harrison Butker kicks some. You know what? Welcome to the Chiefs kingdom. How's it going, Chiefs Kingdom? You're listening to the Arrowheads Abroad podcast with myself, Brad Simcox, and the Arrowheads Abroad Supremo, Tom Childs. And for the first time ever, the show couldn't get going without Owen. That's right, we have our new member. We have our new member of the podcast to help us out when Dave isn't around, and obviously he's not around today. Uh, let us introduce you to one of the Arrowheads Abroad writers, Owen Widdowson. How are you doing, mate? How's things? Hello. I'm, I'm good, thank you. I'm yeah? Good. Yeah, better now I'm on a podcast. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, is this, yeah. Are we taking your podcast virginity, Owen? Or? Um, I've done a couple uh, through university with a couple of mates, but never, never NFL related. So this is the Ooh. first sports related one, I'd say. Yeah, exciting. Well, I get, used, say... get used to being on a lot. Let's <laughs> <laughs> hope yeah. it's the first of many. Yeah, yeah. Cause Dave is unreliable at best, <laughs> shall we say? And Man City are playing tonight, so that's why he's not here. But I must go back to the introduction, Brad. Yeah. The show can't get going without Owen. Exactly. I like that a lot. <laughs> was that on the spot? Did you come up with that one on the spot? Or? Oh, yeah, just on the spot, yeah. I no, do I not didn't, believe you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was thinking about it, racking my brains, because Tom said, he said, uh, Owen's coming on today. And I was like, really? Oh, God, right, I'm going to have to do some kind of quirky little intro. Um, so, yeah, I was having to think about that today. But, yeah, I hope you like it. <laughs> no, it was good, yeah. It was good, good, good. Good, good, good way to get started, yeah. Yeah, good. Um, so the listeners will be eager to uh, to understand our new chief that they're listening to. Um, come on, Owen, tell us a bit about yourself, about uh, you, you know how you became a Chiefs fan and how long you've suffered like the rest of us. Like, we don't want like the boring interview esque answer. When I was I three w- years old, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want you turning around and saying, "Yeah, I'm a really bubbly person," which basically means fat or anything <laughs> like that. I want you to tell us about your chief fandom in the most interesting way possible. No pressure. Everybody's whatsoever. got a story, haven't they? Everybody's got a good story about how they became a chief fan. Um, so actually, I I've I haven't been a chief fan for considerably long I've uh, it was about four years ago um, and it was when uh, the Chiefs played in uh, Wembley against the Lions um, ah, awesome. my friend was a Lions fan because he was from the area uh, when he grew up he grew up around Detroit um, before moving to England and he said like do you want to come do you want to come watch it with me and I'd never heard the NFL before I'd never really watched it before but I was like you know what sure why not and as a laugh I'll support the other team uh, <laughs> so basically you were being a dick yeah yeah of course yeah I had to, I had to be I had to be yeah. um, and it turned out that the Chiefs absolutely destroyed the Lions in that game <laughs> they did 40, 45 to 15 I think I, I actually remember because it was such a significant win uh, yeah. and I really enjoyed it so I just thought you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna start gonna roll Do you know start, what? start watching that, it yeah that's actually probably one of the main points and main recruiting stories that we hear about uh, Chiefs fans over there in the UK is that game in 2015 isn't it yeah, yeah. there's a lot of people who actually go do you know what I'm a Chiefs fan from that day onwards yeah, yeah. it was because it was such a such a big win yeah. uh, and it was I think it was Marcus Peters' rookie season as well yeah, and was. then he went on to have a great rookie season I think didn't he win defensive rookie of the year that he yeah, did he, did. he yeah. did yeah um, and yeah, it was just a great it was a good season to to get started and obviously Wembley was a big well, at that at that point the Chiefs were sitting at two and five and so mm. you done well to stick with the Chiefs because it looked like the season was already lost Jamal Charles had obviously gone down for the year and we mm. were going with running backs called Char Kendrick West and Spencer Ware uh, I think after that we went on a, a, like a, a nine game winning streak and obviously yeah. got our, our first playoff win in 20 years so ten games in a row it was, yeah, and I was against the Texans wasn't it the uh, 30 it, to nothing loss no, win it, against it, the Texans it was so you couldn't really have picked a, wor- a better time to yeah, start supporting the Chiefs like, yeah. you've got you've got me here who's been suffering since 2001 or like the bad times and whatever and then you've got Brad who joined like late 2012 and his first season was the worst season in Chiefs history <laughs> then, then, you, then you rock along when the Chiefs turn up on your doorstep and then you just roll with it from then so um, yeah kudos to you <laughs> just to be a dick to your mate yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it it's a good and story they just like shot it. out of nowhere and, uh, and they're the team they are today which is yeah, and, getting better and, and better every year 
and now you're here hosting a podcast. Yes, yeah. of course, yeah. Exactly. So, uh, do, you, do you have a jer- uh, jersey or anything? Yes, uh, I had um, I had a Marcus Peters jersey after his rookie season, and then nice. we all know what happened there, so I kind of, that, that one's at the back of my wardrobe now. Uh, <laughs> and I recently, for Christmas, got Eric Berry jersey, and now we oh, always no. have Eric Berry. <laughs> so basically, you're not going to get a Mahomes yeah, jersey. I'm that never going to get Mahomes jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I, I, have, I wear the Berry one as more of a commemorative one because of mm-hmm. how good he was for the Chiefs and yeah. how remember, memorable of a career he had there. So I, I wear it now in memory of him. All right, well, uh, he's not well, dead, mate. He's not, <laughs> well, in memory of his time as a Chief. <laughs> he's not dead, mate. Feels like it, though, mate. Does yeah. it? <laughs> well, uh, welcome aboard to the show, mate. It's nice to Thank have you. you, and thanks for helping us out. Um, talking of commemorative players. Um, we we had news recently that Jamal Charles has signed a one day contract, and apparently DJ is going to be doing the same thing, which mm-hmm. uh, Tom's very happy about. And it's two of our favourite players as well, mate. It is. It is um, obviously Jamal being yours and Darren yeah. Johnson being my favourite all time chief. Um, I've got a lot of time for this. It hurt me. It hurt me a lot last year when mm-hmm. Derek Johnson came out and signed for the Raiders, and thankfully we didn't really see much of him in the Raiders jersey because he was injured for a lot of the year, and obviously he got cut. But it still uh, he hurt. saw the light, mate. That's what it was. Yeah. He was like, I'm not playing for this. Are you kidding? Just, just feigned an injury. Um, <laughs> but the thought of him coming back to sign a one-day contract really does excite me. Like, he's a definite Chiefs Ring of Honor guy. He's not going to be a Hall of Famer guy because inside linebackers really do have to be exceptional mm-hmm. to be um, a Hall of Famer. And as good as Derek Johnson was, he's not, not quite Brian Urlacher, is he? So he's still going to get the recognition he deserves from the Chiefs. He's going to get the one-day contract. He's going to get his nice piece on the website, all his social media posts that they send out for him. And then in a few years' time, he's going to get his Ring of Honor game. So, yeah, I'm absolutely delighted that DJ is getting the recognition he deserves. Yeah, and uh, like Jamal Charles... Yeah, he it's similar story in a way. He went to one of our bitter rivals, the Broncos, which mm-hmm. I was very miffed about. I wasn't happy about that. Mm-hmm. And then he said he was always wanting to be a Bronco, which kind of got taken out of context a little bit because he did actually want to be a Bronco when he was younger. Yeah, um, which you can't take that away from him. But he's a he's a chief now. He's a chief again, and that makes me happy. And just like what Owen was doing earlier, he was digging it out of the from, from the back of the wardrobe, <laughs> you know, dusted it off. Um, that I can now wear that Jamal Charles jersey with pride. Um, but yeah, it was nice seeing that the Chiefs giving him a good send off, doing the uh, the handoff with Patrick Mahomes. That was a nice little touch. I love yeah, that. Really. Yeah, full tuxedo as well, which I thought was quite funny <laughs> from the uh, from the videos on there. Him, yeah, all yeah. the other players wearing full pads, and him just wearing the uh, the suit was a, quite a funny touch. He can do yeah. it all, Jamal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it did How could keep... we... go, go on? on. No, I go think on. we're about to say the same thing, but how good would the Chiefs been? last year if they had say for example 2013 Jamal Charles in this offense like Kareem Hunt great player bit of an arsehole great player (laughs) Damian Williams come in done very well but none of them two are a touch on 2013 Jamal Charles so if you put the 2013 Jamal Charles version into the 2018 Chiefs offense how many points a game do they average how many points in the Super Bowl you mean (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) uh well, I mean, yeah, I mean, the production actually apparently went down, didn't it, when um, when Hunt was released? Mm-hmm. So to have somebody like Jamal Charles, who would be you know consistent through that twenty thirteen season, like he was, mm-hmm. uh, it's just it would have been mind blowing to see that. But sadly, we're never going to see it. Yeah, it's a shame. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's I really mean, in, in his prime, he was he wasn't quite incredible. Um, it was yeah, it it, it would have been it would have been amazing. I don't think. I don't think any team could have, could have stopped that offense if we had Jamal Charles. No, um, no, definitely no, not. Not a chance. Not a chance. No, it's this. I mean, it did kick off a bit of a debate as well of you know how do, can we actually see Jamal Charles actually getting into the Hall of Fame? Now, the the fan in me is like, yeah, of course he can. And then when you look at you know these injured seasons and and all that, can he get in the Hall of Fame with his numbers? I think. Individually, he probably can, but I think the fact that he played on so many bad teams, he never played in a playoff win. Um, obviously, that one that happened whilst he was in Kansas City was the season that we were talking about earlier when he got injured. Um, I think that's going to go against him. He obviously hasn't got a ring. He's never been on a team that's come close to getting a ring. So it just seems like uh, a waste, doesn't it? As like if you turn on the tape and watch the guy, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, but. 
there's only going to be one or two guys in that room when they talk about him that would have watched him in detail like we have. Mm-hmm. But to the broader audience, they will look at the stats and say, okay, he's what 56th in all-time rushing yards, no playoff wins, and I don't think he gets in on that on yeah. that basis. But I, I, I genuinely think if you just watch him and see how he played the game, then I think he is a definite Hall of Famer. But Something I just else. don't, I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, the way he used to cut his runs was yeah, I've never seen anyone like it. Just, yeah. just phenomenal player. Um, but yeah, we'll have to leave that in the past now because uh, DJ and Te- and <laughs> Jamal Charles are now going to be retired Chiefs. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we'll move on from that. The uh, the other news that was around about was uh, there's more news on the Tyreek Hill story, which um, kind of puts a bit of a red face on us a little bit because we were really, really going into this in the last podcast, weren't we, Tom? Mm-hmm. <laughs> really giving our thoughts on this. But then there's a, a new situation where these text messages have arised um, where the I think it was Tyreek Hill's lawyer has um, has handed these in basically and saying, look, you know, um, she said, you know, Crystal's admitted to everything now. Um, so lay off Tyreek Hill basically. And now you're finding fans are in this this kind of mixed emotions part because a lot of us, and I'll, I'll include myself there, we're, we're very disappointed in the audio recording that came out and we really laid into Tyreek Hill. So does does this actually change anything now, Tom? I don't think it changes my opinion on the audio recording too much because he still turned around to Crystal and said, you should be scared of me too, bitch. Yeah. And that's a bit unf- unforgivable, isn't it? Really? That's there in black and white. So mm-hmm. it's still not a great thing to say. Obviously, he's come out and denied the other things that were said in the audio about the punches to the chest, the belts, and whatnot. Yeah. And then obviously they've got this text message that supposedly has Crystal admitting fully that she was responsible for what happened to their son. But I'm. I'm not going to go into it too much, but Brad Simcox, <laughs> Owen Widdison, I do think the text messages were a bit suspect. Do you really think that, Tom Child? I do, Brad Simcox, because of the way they were worded. Right. Okay. Um, they didn't seem like the most convincing text I, messages in the world, I do have to admit. I've got to agree with you both, actually, because just the way they were worded, it didn't seem like it was sent to a loved one or a friend or you know that kind of thing it was a bit formal yeah, yeah very formal very yeah. yeah matter of fact to the point um not text message language shall we say but not and... just not just admitting the blame once but a couple of times in that in that one yeah. message it yeah. just seemed very odd but I and i don't really want to go into this too much because we're going to get killed by people for saying this but I let's say the jury is still out yeah from me on all of this and I am very 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 suspect of Tariq Hill his girlfriend and Tariq Hill's lawyer yeah uh, when it comes to all of this at the moment and I still do not think we're gonna get the happy ending that a lot of Chiefs fans would like us to get. No. Well, apparently he is working with, you know, authorities, um, you know, to, to to piece together what happened and things. And he has been upfront with uh, mm-hmm. with with you know questioning and you know the answers he's been given. And so, but yeah, we'll we'll I think we'll have to put a pin in it, won't we, and just find out what happens <laughs> next because the I mean but, the the emotion and the opinion swing has just gone mm-hmm. a little bit in the middle again now, isn't it? It's kind of from everybody. You know, pretty much, uh, you know, saying that's his career over. To now, you're getting some of us going, "Well, it's, mm-hmm. it's not technically over." Um, I think, I think what it has done, it has given the Chiefs a reason to keep him on the roster. Yeah, and the NFL, no reason to suspend him. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. I think the lawyer has done a very, very good job. Yeah. protecting Tariq Hill but then now we're going into the realms of opinion so I need to move on <laughs> yeah I think we will move on from it um, I, don't, I don't want really Owen's first podcast to be sitting here talking about stuff like this like we're, we're supposed to be talking about the fun things at Chiefs but yet again we're sitting here talking about Tariq Hill for the, the fourth show in a row I'm just so glad that Owen didn't go laying into it yeah. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like it's one of those things where um, it's it's at the stage now where it's gone so far that there's nothing really 
else we we can say or do about it it's just a time thing now of just waiting to see what 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 happens later on down the line see what see what comes about because th- there's it's all well and good like um guessing and and assuming but it's it's hard to it's really hard to make a confident point about what's going to happen in the future yeah exactly because it is just such a mess at the moment completely agree yeah <laughs> completely agree um but yeah if you want to hear our thoughts about it on the previous show please obviously listen to the uh, the previous podcast which actually did very well last time didn't it on the numbers <laughs> it did, um, <laughs> <yeah>. so um <laughs> yeah we'll see how this how well this one does after we've uh, we've mentioned all that but what we're going to do we're going to move forward because we we're going to talk about um the the biggest winners and losers during this off season and i've picked two winners and two losers tom's done the same and so is owen so we're going to go through each one and hopefully we pick some of them that uh, you agree with and if you don't just let us know um so first of all let's have a look so uh, winners and losers so uh, let's have a, a winner from owen first who's the biggest winner in the chiefs during this off season uh, so my my biggest winner was uh, the new defensive coordinator Steve Spagnolo. Um, obviously brought in in the off season. Uh, I feel like the Chiefs' defense was was very much rock bottom last season. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it wasn't it wasn't great to 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 say at best. Um, and he's he's coming to a new he's coming to the Chiefs obviously at rock bottom. It can't really get any worse. So if no matter how much better. It, like the defense gets i feel like he'll get some sort of praise from it and i don't yeah. feel like i don't feel like he can make it any worse than it already is and obviously with all the off-season additions and all the focus that's been on the chiefs defense this off-season with Tyrion matthew frank clark Bashaw breeland damian wilson i feel like yeah. there's so many pieces that have been added that can he really go wrong at this point is like he surely has to win he has had a shopping list, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the draft was clearly defensive-minded. Um, the uh, yeah, the the the, the off-season acquisitions as well. You know, the, with trading for Frank Clark and um, yeah, it, it just seems as though that's. I I would, I would, I would agree with you. There. I think Spagnuolo is a good a good winner out of this off-season. He can't do no wrong, can he? No, he can't. <laughs> well, I like, well, I like it. It seems like that Brett Veach has bought in to the scheme that. Sp- Spagnolo wants to run and he said right these are the type of players that I would like and Brett Veach has gone out and got them and I I'm happy with the appointment of Sp- Spagnolo um I feel like he's going to do enough for the Chiefs mm-hmm. to to be play well on defense they're not going to be a top 10 unit but we've said it time and time again become average and we'll love you forever yeah. and I think he's well on his way to producing an average defense next year. It's interesting you say that. Please be average. That's yeah. all we. That's all just, we want. Just Please mediocre. Yeah, that's, we don't ask for much. Um, yes. No, that's a good one. Um, I never thought of actually Spagnolo, but that, yeah, that is a good one. Uh, okay, so uh, let's go with the loser from Tom. The one of the losers from the Chiefs off season is Patrick Mahomes. No way. Yes, Patrick you, Mahomes. You insane. We just spent a few minutes talking about this player, but you take away Tyreek Hill from any team and that offense is going to suffer. Um, Patrick Mahomes last year had Travis Kelsey, Sammy Watkins, Tyreek Hill to throw, to, the throw, to throw the ball to. Potentially he's going to be without Tyreek Hill and we're now relying on Sammy Watkins' fitness for him to have a true number one wide receiver. So for me, if you lose Tyreek Hill, your production is going to come down a little bit. Tariq Hill bailed Patrick Mahomes out just as much as Patrick Mahomes bailed Tariq Hill out last mm. year. So it's a big loss for him. And I expect to see that resembled in the numbers come the end of next year. Really? Mm-hmm. I actually agree. I agree with that as well. Um, I, I, I feel like obviously losing Tariq Hill is huge. I mean, he also lost uh, Chris Conley in the offseason, which isn't a massive loss, but it's just another receiver that knows a scheme that's 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 gone. He lost I mean, Hunt he's, as well midway through, didn't he? Yeah, and Hunt as well, yeah. yeah. And also Mitch Morse went mm-hmm, uh, yeah. in the off-season to the Bills, I think. And mm-hmm. I actually looked this up earlier. Um, Patrick Mahomes was sacked 14 times in between week 7 and 11, which was when Morse was injured. Uh, and he was sacked 26 times overall in the whole season. So the majority of the sacks did come wow. in those weeks when Morse was out. And now he's obviously gone permanently. And Austin Rita, I think, is a new... 
yeah. will be the new starting centre. But mm-hmm. I, f- I feel like the Chiefs have have almost assumed like, okay, he's had this MVP season, he's incredible. So now let's like he can do it all on his own without any. Let's just let's just get rid of Tyreek Hill, like, or, or, or let's just like, um, you know, Tyreek Hill is like all up in the air. Mitch Morse is gone. Chris Conley's gone. We've got yeah. Hardman, who's quick, gr- like very very uh, fast guy, but very raw talent at the same time and not sure whether he he can step up yet and obviously you've got Demarcus uh, Demarcus Robinson and Byron Pringle as well a couple of guys that are, they've shown signs but they're not I feel like it, Patrick Mahomes is gonna he's almost expected to make these guys incredible yeah and I feel like time will tell whether he'll actually be able to do yeah. that if that makes sense it's, it's, it's interesting you mentioned Hardman as well because Reed never likes to use his rookies in the first year does he mm-hmm. so you know are we going to see Hardman much other than from probably punt returns or whatever um, I think we're going to have to to be honest if this Tyreek Hill situation is playing out yeah. how it's looked like where suspension is probably going to come I know I said the NFL have no reason to suspend him but we, that's not the way the NFL works they will find a reason to suspend uh, Tyreek Hill whether they like it or not so um I think we are expecting Hardman to come in and produce from day one, which is going to be tough in Andy Reid's system. Everyone knows it's a hard system for wide receivers to pick up in year one. And if Sammy Watkins does get injured, then you're looking at what Hardman and Demarcus Robinson mm-hmm. being the two biggest weapons or the most relied on weapons in uh, receivers. So I think Patrick Mahomes is definitely a loser when it comes to this offseason because of the weapons, mainly Tyreek Hill, has been taken away from him. Yeah. Okay, then let's say a winner from me. I'm going to go with Frank Clark Mm -hmm. because uh, I think, yeah, forget about the money and all that mega deal and all that that he's got. And uh, he's got uh, the opportunity now. It's it's tying in with the Spagnolo, um, you know, uh, prediction from uh, from from Owen that I think he's going to be a winner in this defense because he he has come into this as the big as the big fish, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. Um, he's the guy that's really going to make a stamp, put his own, own mark on this defense moving forward. And he doesn't have the big, you know, the, the big guys around him, you know, the big personalities such as Justin Houston, Eric Berry. He, he's going to be the main focus on this defense now. Um, you know, yes, you've got Chris Jones and everybody, but I think he's got a perfect, you know, perfect guy alongside himself with Chris Jones that he's going to just have a great season. And yeah. And he's got the mega books. I keep mentioning the money, don't I? <laughs> well, he's now got to prove himself because he's been paid the money. Yeah. He's, he's got $105 million in his back pocket now. Well, most most of it guaranteed, rather. Um, he is now expected to perform. And if you do line Fresh him up start. alongside Chris Jones, then them mm. two are just going to tear it up. He is the prototypical 4 free end that we needed in this defense. Bagnola would have identified him and said, let's go and get him. And that's exactly what the Chiefs have gone out and got. So it, their expectation is there, but I expect him to live up to the hype but you know how excited I was about signing Frank Clark <laughs> I was going mental in this podcast two weeks ago when we signed him and I'm still delighted about it and yes for me he is a big big winner in this off season yeah okay uh, Owen we need a loser from you mate loser um, I think uh, with the way the off season's gone and also the uh, the rookie class with uh Juan Thornhill, the uh, safety. I put uh, Amani Watts in there as one of my losers. Good shot. Um, I feel like they, there's a lot of safeties on the roster now. Um, obviously, with Tyrion Matthew coming in as a uh, free agent, and then uh, Juan Thornhill in the in the in the draft, and then there's also Jordan Lucas who had a good season uh, as a Chief last year. Um, I just feel like he, he's he's gonna have a lot he's got a lot to prove uh obviously because the injury took him out of the majority of last season in in his rookie year um and i just feel like there are so many guys ahead of him on that depth depth chart now he's got a big fight ahead of him to to try and prove himself on this team yeah i i feel the same way because if you look at it you probably got thornhill watts and lucas all competing for that free safety deep deep safety role now um you'd expect matthew and probably Sorensen to play further up the field um, so yeah, I, for me, I have actually Armani Watts as the third deep safety on this on this mm-hmm. roster. I, th- I think his position on the roster is probably safe because I think he showed enough, and obviously the Chiefs put a, a sizable um, investment into him with a fourth round pick last year, and he showed enough last year to warrant another roster spot. But in terms of playing time, I think he will be limited, shall we say, on snaps because from 
by all accounts, one Thornhill is going to be the guy with Matthew. Yeah, I mean they're both very good players, and that he's his main competition now, isn't he? Is is Thornhill mm-hmm. um, for Watts? Um, yeah, I, I agree with you there. I think I think it's bad timing for Armani to get that get that injury when he did because he could have really put a, a a big big stamp on this on this mm-hmm. defense at the back, especially when you know we didn't have Eric Berry at all pretty much mm-hmm. all season. Um, we could have needed him then, and he could have really made his mark, but sadly it didn't happen. And now he's got all this competition, which, yeah, I agree, it's not going to be good for him. But um, hopefully he'll uh, he'll stick around and he'll c- compete for it, which is what you, what you want, isn't it, in a, in a roster? You want a lot of competition. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, definitely, um, yeah. So, that's, yeah. What, that's what made Dorsey so good, especially in the early years with him and Andy Reid. The, the roster was always so deep, mm-hmm. uh, especially 2013, 14, 15. We had one of the deepest rosters in the league. Okay, it's not so much the same these days, but if the Chiefs can get to that point where they've got – depth all the way through every position then they're laughing yeah okay then let's move on to the next one which will be a winner from Tom who's going to be a winner mate who is the win- one of the winners Chase Litton Chase Litton <laughs> yes Chase alright I'm, tr- I'm intrigued the third quarterback on our roster I think he's a winner this off season because the Chiefs haven't come out and signed Chad Henney to another deal so Chad Henney will be moved on next year you should imagine because it becomes mm-hmm. too expensive next year they signed EJ Manuel who's probably just a camp body let's be honest and they didn't draft a late round quarterback either Good which point. they have done in the past a few times the likes of Aaron Murray comes to mind they've signed him Tyler Bray drafted him late rounds and they they haven't got that guy so I think Chase Litton is a winner of this offseason because I think he's going to see a lot more reps than normal at training camp and I think the Chiefs are building for him to become Mahomes' full time backup next year I'd be happy with that I think I, great. I think the guy looks great yeah I, I, I seem I feel confident in him in him should we say and last year obviously he was the fourth quarterback on the roster and then he eventually become the third quarterback and sent to the practice squad for the year or was it mystery IR I can't remember but anyways he wasn't on the active roster I don't think he gets on the active roster again this year but I think he shows enough in training camp and in the OTAs that from next season he will become the Chiefs full time backup quarterback Ooh, nice young uh, young stable of quarterbacks we got there then mm-hmm. yeah I like nice. I like it I, I like the guy okay he's not Patrick Mahomes and I don't think he'll ever be an NFL starter but I think you need to have a guy in there that you can trust that knows the system just in case the worst case scenario happens and yeah I think the Chiefs have got that guy in Chad Henney at the moment and potentially Chase Litton next year yeah and yeah like you said you probably don't need Chad Henney's experience much now because Mahomes is lightening up the lightening up the league isn't he well, but, well, well that's it Chad Henney is there as a veteran pre- presence mm. but th- by the time next season starts Patrick Mahomes will be in his fourth year yeah. okay his third year starting but still his fourth year so he is then coming to the end of his rookie deal so he will be classed as a full blown veteran in this league so yeah he will be the experience in the Chiefs team because he, by then he would have seen a lot and yeah he'd just be ready to go and be the guy no matter what Never thought of it like that. When you said Chase Litton, I thought, God, Tom's Tom's been drinking again. <laughs> yeah, <Here we> go. <laughs> where's he going with this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Um, next one is going to be a loser from me, and I've actually put in Damian Williams. Now, it's not because I've got the Williams mixed up, because <laughs> we we have got about three or four of them now, haven't we? But um, Damian Williams looked like the guy that uh, we were going to turn to, to uh, you know, to you know take the ball off Mahomes and, and, and be this Kareem Hunt standing. But ever since I saw Darwin Thompson, <laughs> I'm like, I'm so much in love with this kid. I really am. He's, he's, he's one of those players that just excites me and I see so many good qualities in him. And I think when the Chiefs get somebody like that, even in the sixth round, I was so surprised that we got somebody like that in the sixth round. I think this guy's going to really, really push Damien Williams for the starter. I really do, and uh, it's it's probably bad timing for Damien because he is on the up, and he has got this. You know, he's he has got the confidence uh, from the Chiefs to be the starting running back. So Thompson's going to be really at his heels this year, I reckon, pushing for a start. What do you think? I'll jump in. I agree 
slightly that Damien Williams is a slight loser. But not just because of the Darwin Thompson. I think the fact they signed Carlos Hyde as well yeah. makes him a little bit of a, a loser in every sense of the word, I suppose. But I, I think Darwin Thompson is going to be used a lot differently to mm-hmm. the way that Damien Williams will be used. Um, I still think Damien Williams will be the guy. He will be our first and second down back. But I expect Andy Reid to mix it up with some different packages and get creative with Darwin Thompson. Similar to like how he tried to get creative with D'Anthony Thomas, who was yeah. more of a wide receiver than a running back. But I, I see a similar sort of usage coming from Andy Reid when it comes to Thompson. So although I think Darwin Thompson has the potential to become the guy in the offense, I think it's far too early to brand him that. At the end of the day, he is a sixth round pick. The Chiefs have invested money in running back in Damian Williams and Carlos Hyde. So um, I, I don't think Damian Williams is completely lost yet but I, I, I can see it co- going that way in a couple mm-hmm. of years time for sure yeah yeah okay then uh, moving on we need a winner from Owen uh, I, I went a bit broad uh, with my next <laughs> with my next one um, I went for the rookies in general yes uh, all the rookies yes. the, the rookie draft class for the Chiefs this year um is I feel like they're yeah. It, it, first of all, I I do really like the draft class. Uh, I feel like we had a really good um, we had a, we got a great few players out of it. Um, I mean, the franchise is let, let's not kid ourselves. It, it's it's on the verge of something quite big with Patrick Mahomes. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if if things go our way, then I feel like this will be a very long term uh, a long term thing for it, like a franchise for like us. It, it's, it's quite a good thing. Um, so these rookies coming in, they've got a great opportunity to join a franchise that's pretty much on the verge of something quite big. Um, and I mean, Hardman's come in. Obviously, we traded up a couple of round, a couple of spots to get him in the second round. Um, and with the whole Hill fiasco going on at the moment, he's got an opportunity to come in and prove himself and sh- show how you know maybe losing Hill isn't the worst thing in the world. Because here I am, I'm really quick. Uh, mm-hmm. I can I can I can fill in that spot. Uh, Thornhill, uh, another great safety uh, to line up alongside Matthew. Uh, I feel like he's got a great, great opportunity to learn from a very veteran, uh, a veteran player in Matthew. Uh, so he's got that great opportunity as well. Uh, Saunders, I think, is a great player, and I think he's going to be a great um, rotational player with the already stacked defensive line we have. Mm-hmm. He's got a great opportunity to learn from some talented um, defensive linemen already, and also become that rotational player. Just what we need to. Uh, to keep the keep the defense uh, keep the defensive line healthy constantly throughout the games. Mm-hmm. I mean, having depth in the defensive line is really important to keep that rotation and keep keep the offensive line on their toes. It's, so. it's what made the Seahawks great: the fact that they could constantly roll guys in at defensive line. Yeah, like everyone exactly, talked yeah. about the Legion of Boom, and the Legion of Boom were incredible. Yeah. But they had seven or eight guys that they could just rotate into that defense the whole time. Yeah, definitely. Same yeah. with the Broncos when they were good. They just they're up front; they could keep things fresh the whole time, and it showed that you can produce pressure with three and four man fronts if you've got the right guys at a hundred percent up there. Yeah, um, definitely. And then obviously you you touched on Darwin Thompson as well, and uh, the young running back that's that's going to come in and hopefully prove himself as well so. I'm so excited by that guy I, can't, <laughs> I know I keep saying it but I am I, I can't stop watching highlights of, I, I, this weekend I've actually just been watching Jamal Charles and Darwin Thompson highlights <laughs> I'm that confident in this guy I'm actually that confident I want his jersey <laughs> which really is number 25 well. again isn't it willing to invest money into a rookie's jersey Rookie's jersey, good on you. But so basically, by default, what you're saying, Owen, is that the real winner of the off season was Brett Veach. Oh yeah, Brett, yeah, Brett Veach. Yeah, With the I mean, if yeah. if all the if all these players come off and uh, do prove themselves uh, to be what I what I hope them to be, then yeah, Brett Veach definitely. Quality. Uh, I mean, quality. when you've got a 300 pound defensive lineman that can do a backflip, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I wish he'd stop win. doing those. I though. That's a win straight away. <laughs> I wish he'd stop doing those. I keep thinking, oh god, ACLs. Stop it! <laughs> You're gonna snap them. Stop it. Uh, no, that's a good shout. I think the draft is, uh, is is a good one there. All the rookies are definitely into a winning situation, like you said, with the uh, the arrival of Patrick Mahomes and the way that the franchise is going now. It's it's considered one of the big powerhouses, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, hopefully we can just get that ring, man. Come on. Let's get that ring. Um, right, okay. Um, I think we're on to a loser for Tom. 
a loser for me. I'm not. I'm going to be short and sweet with this because I'm conscious of how much time we've used yeah. so far. But um, a loser, Daryl Williams. Daryl Williams. Just, oh, you're going the Daryl Williams. We bro. just talked about Damian mm-hmm. Williams and how his snaps could be affected by the um, drafting of Darwin Thompson. Daryl Williams' roster spot could be affected by the drafting of Darwin Thompson because if you, for my money, the three running backs going into the season will be Damian Williams, Carlos Hyde, and Darwin Thompson. And yeah. whether, we have to wait and see whether the Chiefs can sneak Daryl Williams onto a, onto the practice squad or via a mystery IR or whatever, but I, I'm not too sure they will be able to. So I think a loser for this offseason is Daryl Williams. It's a shame. I like Daryl Williams. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, in bits and... Bob's he's looked okay, but he's not exactly. He's not the type of loss that will have me crying. No, let's let's be honest. Um, he was the third running back on the roster. I think Darwin Darwin Thompson enables Andy Reid to get a lot more creative, and he has like a thunder and lightning in Damian Williams and Carlos Hyde, and then just mm. has this just side card in Darwin Thompson that he could just use however he wants. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've got a winner. I, I I've got a com- combination here. I've got a winner and a loser. Mm-hmm. And it's my guy, Demarcus Robinson. Oh, so you're doing two for one here? I'm doing two for one here because um, the Tyreek Hill situation, obviously, that's going to give him a bit more of a you know, confidence. And he has been tweeting. I've been checking his tweets, basically saying, you know, it's 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 his time now to mm-hmm. to try and do something about this and and be the the wide receiver that the, the kingdom wants. But then again, you've got the Hardman draft <laughs> which it looked as though it was on the up for Demarcus Robinson and then they go and get Hardman and then you start thinking is he's going to lose out now because <laughs> you know um, it's not certain about Tyreek Hill we've got this other speedster in Hardman is Demarcus Robinson going to be phased out again so let's do it we did it last year a yardage Demarcus Robinson dinner bet I mean, if you did, weren't aware, last year we had a bet over the amount of yards that Demarcus Robertson would get. Uh, Brad said that he would get over 400. I said he, he would not. He ended up getting 250 something. So should have went few, to 200, shouldn't he? He was a few short. So um, Brad ended up buying me dinner on Super Bowl Sunday, <laughs> which was lovely. Um, so yeah, set your yardage, Brad and I'll tell Mine you. Mine tasted bitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, and, well, for Demarcus Robinson, yeah, I'm happy to take 400 again <laughs> for dinner bet again. Yeah, do you know I'm not? I don't know. I don't know if I'm confident. No, I mean it sh- I should be because you know if the Terry Hill situation isn't sorted, then they're going to have to have somebody like Demarcus Robinson. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go 400 again. Yeah. So you reckon he's going to go over 400? Yeah. You just want a free meal out of me every okay, year. Okay. So don't you? right. So the bet is set. For dinner <laughs> again on Super Bowl Sunday. Should I just give you the money now? <laughs> yeah. <it's so> <laughs> but I, I get what you're saying when it comes to the winning side of it cause, because we might as well skip to my one because I've actually gone for Sammy Watkins because of the Tyree Kill situation. Yeah. Sammy Watkins is a guy that's on a big contract at the moment but a lot of people are expecting to get cut at the end of the year because of his cap hit and the, the way the contract is set out he can be cut and it, at little expense to the Chiefs at the end of next year. But if Tyree Kill never comes back then Sammy Watkins is the guy. Okay, they drafted Hardman, but he's still a rookie at the end of the day. Sammy Watkins is the presence in the wide receiver room. He is the guy. And I think he has an opportunity, if Tyreek Hill doesn't come back, to keep his contract, to get the Chiefs to sign him to another big guaranteed contract. Mm -hmm. Um, So he is the winner of this because his own fate is in his... His fate is in his own hands now. How much he gets paid in 2020 will depend on how he plays, especially if Tyreek Hill isn't there. If he can go and produce Tyreek Hill-esque numbers, the 12, 1300 uh, yard mark, then he is going. To, the Chiefs are going to find a way to keep him. So the opportunity is there for Sammy Watkins by default because of the Tyreek Hill situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, that's what makes him one of the winners of the offseason. Okay, we don't want, we didn't want this situation to arise, but it has, and now Sammy Watkins has an opportunity to deal with it how he wants to. It's all a bust now, isn't it? Really, I would say for yeah. Sammy, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. If he if it, if he goes below a thousand yards this year, there's no way in hell he's on the roster in 2020. Nope, I totally agree. Totally agree. Um, have we got another loser from Owen? Yep. Uh, I've actually been thinking of one. Um, while whilst we've been talking, I've been thinking of one. Um, this is a really again bit of a obscure one, but I'm going to say Matt House, the linebackers coach. Wow. Um, simply because. I feel like the linebackers weren't the best in 2018. Uh, they We didn't have the best season uh, in run defence, and I feel like linebackers is still a spot on our roster that is considerably 
thin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I feel like Matt House just hasn't been given much help uh, in the off season. There's been so many moves made, and uh, obviously the defensive line is now stacked. I mean, there's Tyrion Matthew on the defense as well, like I've said before, but. I feel like the linebackers still need some help. I mean, Reggie, Reggie Ragland, uh, Anthony Hitchens brought in last last off season, uh, and I feel like we just need we need another guy at the linebacker position to help that run defense a bit more. And I feel like Matt House has kind of been left on his own there. To it, it, it does seem himself. like the the kind of missed out position. I think you're right there. It it, it has been forgotten about, hasn't it? Yeah, um, definitely. But yeah. I think it's only because that they've had these big contracts from these other players from the Hitchens and Raglan like you say so that's probably why they're thinking probably give them another chance and see what happens but yeah, um, yeah. you know well, you I never know they've, they put pieces around them that might help them um, and Matthew might be one of those that, that really you know um, is a, kind of like an anchor for them both mm. by uh, all accounts Anthony Hitchens was much better in, in, as a 4-3 middle linebacker yeah. for the Cowboys than he was last year as a 3-4 middle linebacker so and obviously they brought in that will um, change they brought in Damian Wilson, uh, the, who actually used to play with uh, Hitchens in in Dallas. So mm, um, yeah. hopefully they can ignite some sort of chemistry to get that uh, to get those uh, those linebackers fired up a bit more. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I feel like it's a position that that might struggle on the defense next year. Yeah, I'm not too convinced they will. I'm I'm not to be honest. I think Hitchens will be bad. I'm looking forward to seeing O'Daniel in this defense as as a pure will uh, linebacker. So have him running around and just basically. <laughs> Chasing after guys as much as possible. <laughs> he smashes into anything. He's quick he? enough. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm worried about the, the Sam line back on the other side because can Ragdon really do it? Can Damian Wilson, da- uh, Damian Wilson, yeah, um, Damian Wilson live up to the reputation of the Cowboys linebackers always being great? So um, we have to wait and see. Obviously, there's talk about Jamie Collins because he's going to come. He's now available, and from May the seventh, they can go out and sign free agents without having their compensatory picks um, affected so potentially they might go out and get Jamie Collins so they might not be done yet but uh, as it stands I, I'm not totally fussed about the linebackers because I feel like there's so much importance on the D-line and the back end that you can probably if any way you can get away with average play then probably at linebacker you can get away with it Mm-hmm. I've okay. probably got defensive coordinators or defensive minded people just screaming at me you, know, <laughs> say, you don't know what you're talking about stupid British person stupid but, British person go and drink some tea yeah. and watch some soccer well I'm just I'm just sitting there thinking I'm, I watched the Patriots last year that got creative up front and were brilliant on the back end and like as good as Dante Hightower is and Carl Van Noy and that like, oh, but it didn't really matter because the and the back end they were so good and up front they were very good as well so mm-hmm. yeah I, I'm not being funny anything the Patriots do I'm happy to copy and live by their opinion. <laughs> You're such a sellout. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I just love the Patriot way. <laughs> uh, and I think lastly we've got a winner from Tom, is that right? No, I've done mine. You've you done did. yours, mate? Yeah, I said Sammy Watkins, didn't I? Sorry. Oh, you did, yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've already done my loser, which is also a winner in Demarcus Robinson. Do you know who is the big winner of the off-season? The fans. George R. R. Martin. <laughs> All right. Yep, because the way that Game of Thrones season eight—no spoilers, by the way—the way that yeah, Game of I haven't Thrones seen the se- fourth one yet. Yeah, the way that Game of Thrones season eight is shaping up, then there's going to be a lot of book sales for when he does eventually catch up. Really? Because unpopular opinion, I have not enjoyed season eight of Game of Thrones. Really? Yep. I did. I've actually really enjoyed it. I haven't. I think it's rushed. I think that they have spent seven series building up to season eight and they don't really know what to do with themselves once they've got here. Right. And I think they are running out of time very, very quickly. Didn't we have um, a question from someone about this? Was it Corey? It, someone mentioned something about the books here. But Saying that it was Game of Thrones, as it got worse from after they've gone away from the books. So you're thinking it might be? Yeah, I've never read the books, but I've I've noticed a, sh- a lack of quality or a drop in quality since the end of series five. To be right. honest, when it comes to the show, and let's talk about last week's episode. Right, yeah. I'm sorry to dive out. I don't even know if you like Game of Thrones, Owen, but normally we use the end of the show to talk about rubbish. Uh, and... Well, I've not. I've not actually. Um, 
Funny story, actually. I've not actually seen a single episode of Game of Thrones. Oh, you should watch other, other than I have seen the um, the Battle of Win- the Battle of Winterfell, the uh, the big episode. And you had was, no idea what was going on. I had because I was around a friend's house and I asked them what they were doing, and I said, "Oh yeah, we're going to watch this episode tonight because we've been watching every single episode since, and we're really excited for it." And I was like, "You know what? Why not? I might as well stick around and watch it." So, <laughs> well, I had no episode. idea what was going on the whole time, but uh, yeah, it was. Well, put, put it this good. way, Owen. They they spent seven seven series building up to that one episode yeah and this big army of the dead that were meant to come in and destroy all man and they killed them off in 60 minutes <laughs> <laughs> wasn't it the longest battle sequence in tv or film history as well I heard like that, yeah. Like, yeah it was the longest it took uh, 55 days to film it uh, yeah. it just yeah. it, it wound me up they built the night king and the army of the dead as this big enemy and then they got a 16 year old girl to Run past thousands of them and kill them off in one go. They they did. I love that bit. That was a TV no, moment. <laughs> I, d- I don't mind them doing that, but do it after a few episodes of having them get run round by the dead. A few, but literally the whole storyline with the army of the dead was done in one episode. You've spent seven series, countless hours, building up to this one point, and you give it one episode because I, I must you planned the show so poorly that you had to finish so much material in six episodes. I must admit, I thought they were going to get to the point where they get to the Iron Isles or at least King's Landing. Yeah, just and and have the a, a big final battle there or something. But yeah, I, I was a bit shocked. Like I must admit, have a few small conflicts. Yeah. have a few bits a few episodes where they're running around away from the, the dead like I loved the bit in the library with Arya yeah uh, that was good why can't yeah. you have more bits like that in episodes like the the episode before when they went to Castle Black and the, or wherever it was and they saw that the body was been ripped apart whatever why not have a few walkers in there and have them chase around a few, fill a few episodes with that but what they've done is they've rushed into this series and now I think because of that the quality of the show has dropped dramatically and now they're at the point where they're thinking oh crap we've got six episodes to tie this whole story up and i don't think they've given themselves nowhere near enough time really mm-hmm. well i'm enjoying it <laughs> <laughs> i'm loving it i'm really enjoying it but uh you're, yeah you're one of these quality guys aren't you you're like no 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 need a bit more detail a bit more substance a bit more meat on the bones well that's it's why breaking bad is the greatest series of all time because the detail is incredible they don't rush it it's so perfectly paced okay that i can get behind i do really it, like uh, breaking bad I'm, i I'm didn't like it oh that's oh, because, you're, that's because it. you're a simpleton that's why <laughs> <laughs> i just want blood and but swords and yeah head breaking head bad weapons. has an incredible ending an incredible ending to the show and it, the whole the season five is incredible it's the the full whack as many episodes as they could possibly do and they went into so much detail that you knew the characters and you just were so involved emotionally in the show and they ended it perfectly where game of thrones they are just trying to rush through it and they are spoiling what was an incredible show especially in the first five series disagree totally disagree disagree. fine i mean breaking bad would just had too many episodes that first season had me bored to tears what, all six, seven episodes of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was like, where's this going? And I even think the second season was like, what? Yeah. Um, but it, I, I, I'll actually say the, the season with the uh, fried chicken guy was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was good. Gus but anyway, yeah. <laughs> Enough of our pe- TV pe- viewing. Pe- people, people tweet us. <laughs> Let us know what your favourite TV show is. Because for me, my, my favourite series is Breaking Bad. I know a lot of people are very much Game of Thrones is the best and I love Game of Thrones it's probably top five for me but the way they've conducted themselves in the last two series has let me down nice. dramatically Game of, Game of Thrones number one for me I used to like Walking Dead but that's just gone totally I don't even watch that now no nor do I um, the storyline is just totally crap basically <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll be honest <laughs> um, but yeah Owen have you got a favourite TV show mate uh I don't. I don't tend to watch too much TV. I've, I mean, I've seen Breaking Bad the whole way through, so um, I that's think that that's, that's going to be my number one because uh, it is just an all-time classic. Um, although it's not been, I say classic, it's not been out too long. So, mm. um, but other than that, I don't, I don't. I don't really tend to watch too many TV shows. Uh, I Why watch quite a lot of sitcoms, <laughs> but um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't rank them as like amazing standard, like quality television, uh, yeah. as opposed to like a drama like Breaking Bad so um, yeah probably Breaking Bad 
probably Britain, Brad. All right. Cool. Excellent. All right, then, lads. I think that's all we've got time for. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Nothing, nothing burning you want to say? No, nothing. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's that's our thoughts on the Arrowheads Abroad podcast. Let us know your thoughts by heading over to the Arrowheads Abroad Facebook page and Twitter page, which is at KC Chiefs underscore UK. So from one kingdom to another, we'll speak to you again soon. <laughs>